There are some problems that only true British people will understand. Such problems are never about trivial or meaningless things such as politics or money. Instead, they are of more dire questions such as who's going to put the kettle on and how long has it been since I last had a cup of tea. In this project, we will combine multiple circuits to produce every British person's dream, an internet-enabled teapot. But why create such a pointless sounding device? As it turns out, teapots have one issue which can cause massive family arguments and that is who's going to put the kettle on. Imagine sitting on a sofa with others in the room, it's cold, nobody wants to move, but everyone wants a good old cuppa. So, who's going to put the kettle on? While some families are quick to vote an individual, such as the most unpopular person in the group, other families, such as my own, have resulted to rock, paper, scissors. But technology has come really far since the invention of the teapot. So why is the teapot still stuck in the past? Well, this Englishman has had enough of losing rock, paper, scissors all the time, and so in this project we will build an IoT-controlled teapot. The idea is to convert a teapot into a kettle whose power can be controlled using any internet-enabled device. So to do this we will combine an ESP8266 module running MicroPython and a relay which will make up the, tea the teapot controller side. The idea is to convert a teapot into a kettle whose power can be controlled using any internet-enabled device. So to do this we will combine an ESP8266 module running MicroPython and a relay which will make up the teapot controller side, while a simple website using PHP will host our teapot state and commands. This means that any device that has internet access can control the teapot. So let's build it. So to make this project you're going to need a teapot, two travel cut boilers rated at 12 volts and 100 watts, an ESP8266 MicroPython board, this is a Wi-Fi D1R2 board, an ATX power supply, two relays rated at 10 amps DC, maximum voltage of 30 volts DC, an NTC thermistor, two 2N3904 transistors, two 1K ohm resistors, one 5K ohm resistor, and one 100 ohm resistor. You'll also need something to construct your circuit on. I'm going to use one of these strip boards. They're pretty useful, cheap, and effective. Now, you'll also need some tile cutting bits. This is so we can drill a hole in the teapot and make the hole a bit bigger so the wires will fit through. I've got a set of three here. They are a little expensive, so you may only need the one, um, but hopefully this will work out. I have no idea if it's going to work, but you know, like I said, hope for the best. Uh, so we have two relays here, uh, RY1 and RY2, and these control the heater elements and both of these are controlled by two different transistors, which are both then controlled by the same pin on the ESP8266 D1R2 board. When the ESP8266 turns its heater on output, transistors Q1 and Q2 turn on. When they do, the relay coils will energise and this will cause the relays to switch, which will in turn turn on the heaters. Now the relay coils are powered from a 5 volt source, whereas the heaters are powered from a 12 volt source. And the last source, which is 3.3 volts, is used to power up the thermistor. So if we take a look at the thermistor circuit, we have a 100 R ohm resistor, which is used for protection. We have a 5.6 K resistor, and then we have our thermistor. Now this thermistor is the negative kind, so as the temperature increases, its resistance will decrease. So as the temperature of the thermistor increases, the resistance of that thermistor decreases, and because this is configured as a potential divider circuit, the voltage across the thermistor will also decrease. The ATX power supply obviously powers the 5, the 12 and the 3.3 volts, but for the sake of simplicity I've only shown the green and black wire connections, and in this case I've actually connected it to a switch, but to be perfectly honest you can actually connect the wires directly to each other. When these two are connected, the ATX power supply can turn on and it can provide power for the entire circuit. So to recap, when the ESP8266 has to turn on the teapot, it will turn on transistors Q1 and Q2, which will energise the coils in RY1 and RY2, which will then turn the heaters on, which will then boil the water. While the water is heating up, the ESP8266 is also reading the voltage across R2 through R5, which is a protection resistor. Once the desired temperature has been reached, the ESP8266 can then turn off Q1 and Q2, which de-energizes the coils RY1 and RY2, which then turns off the heaters. For this project, I decided to use MicroPython on an ESP8266 board since Python is a nice language to use. The ESP8266 MicroPython board was very cheap and the two worked together really well. The controller will be used to do three things. Control if the teapot should be on or off, measure the voltage across a thermistor to turn off the heaters, and control the power relays. Controlling GPIO is rather easy in MicroPython, but getting it to work as an IoT device provided some challenges. One option would have been to create an Android-specific app, which could have sent TCP packets to the ESP8266, but this would require port forwarding. Another option would have been some kind of IoT service, but these require me to sit down and have to learn how to use them. 
Instead, I thought of a more trivial solution that I already know how to do, HTTP and PHP. The idea is incredibly simple and is even easier to implement in Python without needing additional libraries. A website is made that has three main pages, an index page which has a button to turn the teapot on, a PHP script page that processes the request, and a hidden page that holds a piece of text that instructs the teapot to turn on or off. When the submit button is pressed, the PHP script creates a file that contains a message which is surrounded by a pair of hashtags. The MicroPython board constantly makes HTTP GET requests for the hidden page and the response is passed through a string split. The second split element will contain the requested teapot state and therefore the MicroPython can easily determine if the teapot needs to be turned on or off. Once the teapot has finished brewing, the MicroPython board simply sends a HTTP POST message to the PHP script informing that the pot has been brewed. This way, no special IP forwarding is needed and any device can control the teapot. Getting this program onto the ESP8266 is easy when using an AMPI tool made by Adafruit. This program can put files onto the MicroPython system, which is super convenient. In this case, my MicroPython has a boot script in a file called boot.py and this contains all of the code for this project including Wi-Fi Connect, HTTP messaging and relay control. So the first task involves drilling a hole in our teapot lid. I have absolutely no idea if this is going to shatter completely and break my hand or... Wow. It's actually doing something. All right. It does say on the instructions to put some kind of lubricant on. Well, I don't think I have any of that kind of stuff. Hmm. Let's try some Pepsi. Bit of an absorbent cloth so I can uh, drip it in. In all fairness, this is sugar-free color, so it's not going to get sticky. Oh, wow. We're through! Basically, nearly. Hang on. Wow. Check that out. We've got our hole. And it opens up. Oh, God, it's hot. It's really hot. Ow, ow, ow. It opens up. Can you see? From there. So we've just widened the hole. Excellent. So the next step is we're going to clean this up. And then we have to feed our elements. Or we have to put the element into the pot. And then we're going to feed the wires through and get them through there. So you're going to put these elements in. And they have this stupid little 12 volt connector for cars. So I'm going to just cut that off. And bear the, you know make the wires bare and push them through. So we're going to do that. And you should have something like this. We can go ahead and whack these in. Oh dear, I don't think they fit. Hang on, they will fit. Just give it a bit of a push. And we're gonna do the same for the other one. I've got one of these nice little stripping things, automatic strippers. Shove that in there. Come on, is it longer than the other one? So it turns out these are actually of different lengths, despite being the same advertised product. I'm going to take a bit of a risk and I'm going to bend it. Okay, I bent it slightly. I think it's going to work. And they're both in. And then all we have to do is feed these wires through the lid. This is a bit of a challenge. Come on. And then we get the second one in. Make sure you've got a bit of spare wire so you can fill it with water and stuff. But other than that, check that out. A teapot with an element inside. So with the teapot done, now we need to go ahead and make our circuit. So I've got some of this strip board, as you can see here, and I'm going to go and cut that on the bandsaw to get me the size I need. It's been like this for days. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is sticking my relays in. Uh, one concern is that the relays have a really strange pinout. You can see that pin out. So that's not uh, strip board friendly. So I'm going to have to make a strip board adjustment or I can actually pull that pin back and then actually solder to the pin itself. So taking the second relay, bend the pin out. Now the next one we're going to do are the transistors. Now it's time to put in our resistors, the uh, 1K ohm resistors to start off with. Ow, that goes hot. Now we've got the various other components around. Luckily for us, we can ground everything using these uh, spare uh, heater wires because the heaters are low side operated. So um, one side of the heater element is actually connected directly to ground. And since the ATX power supply uses a common ground, we can just connect everything to this point. So that's what we'll do. So now that this ugly mess has been done, it's time to get it all together. 
So the next thing we need to do is modify our ATX power supply so it turns on when we plug something in. Uh, now, the easiest way to do that is to basically take the uh, large header, the biggest header there is, and you'll need to cut out the green wire and a black wire. And then all we have to do to turn the unit on once it's got a power cord plugged in is just to connect those two wires together. So now that we've completed our teapots, we have our ATX power supply uh, ready to go, and we've built our relay circuit and connected it up to the uh, micro Python, it's time to get it going and test it out. Unfortunately, the other ATX power supply I had wasn't actually working, so I had to get another one uh, to substitute it in, and now we can go ahead and test it. So the first thing we need to do is plug in the MicroPython board into a USB slot on the computer. This is really just for test purposing to give it a power supply. You could run it off the ATX power supply, but for now I'm just gonna use USB since it's nice and convenient. So we're gonna plug that in. And then we're going to go and power the ATX power supply. Oh, I'm so excited. And... Da. I can definitely smell it. I can hear it. It's definitely doing something in there. Ooh, that water's getting a bit warm. Can't wait for my cup of tea. So, let's have a look what we've got here. Ah, it's very hot. Oh, that, that's very hot. Yes, that's definitely hot enough to make a cup of tea. I'm happy with that. Well, that's it for this project. I hope you enjoyed watching. Enjoy a good old cup and see you next time.